nationality? What would you say? What's your nationality? Your nationality. You're African? Afro Guyanese. And what's your nationality? Afro Guyanese. You see that? Alright, Afro is not Africa, right? That's a continent. Guyanese is a land of many water. Waters. Do you think that's what you are? Does that th think about it? Does it make sense that you're Afro Guyanese? You're two nations basically. They're from Guyana and Africa. Oh! Bring it out. That's what the Bible is describing it as because if we go 
go in this Bible? Are we clearly seeing the prophets are black? Why are they telling us contrary? Why are they telling us contrary? Listen to what Job said. Job 30, 30. Read. Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. Do you hear what the prophet Job said? The prophet Job said his skin is black upon him. Type in Job on Google right now. You're going to see a white man. Go to Lamentations 4 verse 8. We can go to color precept all day in the Bible. To show you what? To show you what? That this Bible is about one particular race. This Bible is about one particular people. This Bible is about one particular nation. And that is the nation of Israel. That is, that is our God-given name in this Bible. Look at this. Read. Lamentation chapter 4 verse 8. Bring it out. Their visage. Their visage. Meaning their faces. Let's just see what the description read. It's blacker than coal. You know what the Bible is saying about the Israelites? Their faces are blacker than coals. Right. That is what the Bible is saying about the Israelites. You feel me? So throughout this entire Bible, the Israelites are described as black people. Yes, uh, right. As this Hispanic people. Right. As Amerindians. The right. so-called Amerindians. That's what this Bible is described as. And you know what's the funny thing? In Christianity, in Christianity, they love to quote the letters of Paul. They love Paul and Paul and Paul. Go to Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Let's see who Paul described himself to be as. Let's see which nation Paul said that he came out to. Then we're going to see who is that nation of people. Romans 11 and verse 1. Read. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? Paul is asking, has God cast away his people? Because when we go into this Bible, when we read this Bible, the God of this Bible is only for the nation of Israel. Right. That is what the God of this Bible is for. It's not for everyone. God, they love the universe. God loved the nation of Israel. Right. That is why Paul is asking, has God cast away his people? In this Bible, we're going to see a lot of possessive now. His people, thy people, our people, thy God, your God. Read it from the top. I say then, that God cast away his people. God forbid. Paul is saying, hell no. That's right. Read. For I also am an Israelite. What did Paul say he is? For I also am an Israelite. No, Paul said he's a Christian. For I also am an Israelite. No, Paul said he's a Mormon or a Baptist or Anglican. Bring it up. For I also am an Israelite. Paul is saying he is an Israelite. Right. To be an Israelite, to have the name of Israel, meaning you're a prince that has power with God. That's right. That's what the nation of Israel is about. And check this out. Look how far we've fallen as, as a nation. What's your last name, young man? What's your last name? Whoop. What's your last name, sir? Webster. Do you know where you got that, those names from? Do you know where you got those names from? Bring it up, bring it up. You got those names from your slave masters. All right. There was a Hope Plantation and there was a Webster Plantation. When your great, great grandfather go on the plantation and the slave master brand his name in his book, now you generate, generate, generate. You're no Webster, and you're no Hope. Products or produces of the slave trade. That's, that's all you are. That's all you are. That's, that's what that name means. It have no weight behind it. Have nothing behind it. That's why we have to change our name to the nation of Israel. Give me Jeremiah 17 and verse 4. Give me Jeremiah 17 and verse 4 because these things are all prophesied in this Bible. This Bible is the book. It's our history book. You feel me? You feel me? This Bible is our history book. But all we need to do we need to read this Bible. We need to read this Bible. We need to come out of the Christian church because they're not teaching us anything. Right. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou even thyself read. shall thence continue from thine heritage. The Bible is saying our people will discontinue from their heritage. Like when we ask you today, what is your nationality? What would you say? What's your nationality? You're a nationality. You're African? Afro-Guyanese. And what's your nationality? Afro-Guyanese. You see that? 
are Afros from Africa, right? That's a continent. Guyanese is a land of many water, waters. Do you think that's what you are? Very important knowledge. Does that, th think about it, does it make sense that you're Afro-Guyanese? You're two nations, basically. You're from Guyana and Africa. How? Oh. It's confusion. It is confusion. But those are courses placed upon our people. Those are courses placed upon our people. You know why? We would forget who we are. We will forget who we are. The land of Africa, the continent of Africa, was conquered by a white man. So no way you can be from Africa. No way you can be from Africa. Guyana. We were brought to Guyana as slaves. So no way you can be from Guyana. This is our slave land. We are walking right now so cluelessly on the Lord's Sabbath on our slave land. Right. That's where we are. We're still in prison. We are still in captivity. We are still oppressed as a people. Right. But what? We don't have a time. We don't have the time of the day to think why is this happening to us? How can we fix it? You know what we're going to do? We're going to wait till all the parties come up. Go parties, go here, go there, go everywhere, drink, smoke, dance. And we have no care for what our future holds. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. But it's all prophesied. Give me book of Hosea 5 and verse 15. I'm going to show you something about our people. I'm going to show you something about our people. Our people, they only hear or they only turn to God in their affliction. When they're going through poverty, when they're getting killed, when they're getting molested, when they're getting raped, that's when they turn to God. That's when they turn to God. And affliction is upon us. Affliction is upon us. And this is what your Christian pastor is supposed to be telling you. They're supposed to be warning you of what's to come. Read that for me. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. I will go and return to my place. This is what the most high God is saying. He's saying he will go and return to his place. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. Till we as the children of Israel, the blacks, the Hispanics and Amerindians, acknowledge that we have trespassed against God. We have sinned before him. We have sinned. Typical example. What is sin? What is sin? Do you know what sin is? Do you know what sin is? But you don't want to commit sin, right? You don't want to commit sin, but you do not know what sin is. Pops on the back, do you know what sin is? I, I can't hear you, sir. Come, come let me talk. Come with me talk. I can't hear you, man. Come. My sister, are you a Christian? Do you go to church? Do you know what sin is? Can you define sin for me? My sister said this way do something wrong, but I want to know what's wrong according to the Bible. What's wrong in God's eyes? That's what I want to know what's wrong. What really is sin? It's a simple definition, a definition that is recorded in this Bible. And most of our people, they are Christians, they are pastors. They're supposed to be able to answer these things. What is sin? What is sin? Sis, help me out. What is sin? What is sin? All right. Since nobody have an idea or kind of properly put together a sentence to define what sin is, we're going to go into the Bible. We're going to go into the Bible now at 1 John 3 and 4, verse the most high. And we're going to see what sin is. Read. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. For whosoever committed sin. Read That's the subject, sin. Read. Transgress also the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. A word for transgression is synonymous with breaking. Right. So if you sin, you break God's laws. Right. For example, I'm going to make it very plain. Today is the Sabbath. On the Sabbath it says there is no buying or selling.
Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 